this page right here is exactly why I read Chainsaw Man. Let's talk about it. Okay, so chapter 103 of Chainsaw Man, Dingy's Dream. Now, this chapter didn't exactly go the way I thought it was going to go, uh, mainly because, like, where we left off, you know, obviously, Dingy had that giant fight with the cockroach devil, and Asa and her friend were, like, right there, and I thought that they were going to have some sort of, like, interaction with each other, but they didn't. In fact, it literally has not even shown Asa at all since then, so I'm kind of like, okay, like, what is, like... They're just not going to meet. Like, that That to me was kind of weird because I thought that was when, you know, Denji and Asa were going, going to meet. Obviously, they didn't. Um, and then you see a bunch of people, you know, supporting Chainsaw Man. Uh, there's a mascot standing outside. Like, he's he has, like, a Chainsaw Man mascot hat, hat thing on. And he's, like, waving a sign or whatever about clothes. And you see people... You know, walking around wearing uh, Chainsaw Man clothes. Anyways, so on the news, they're basically reporting that Chainsaw Man has saved the day. Thanks to, um, or to, towards a cockroach devil, he has saved the day. And then you get a lot of, like, interviews and stuff. Uh, the TV crew are interviewing people on the street. And this is what I've really found very interesting is that initially when, you know, this new arc started, a lot of us had to, had the assumption that everybody just like loves Chainsaw Man now and it's kind of like uh, an anomaly for somebody like Asa to not like Chainsaw Man but in this chapter we actually found out that majority of the public actually don't like Chainsaw Man now I don't know if that also means that they fear Chainsaw Man because Chainsaw Man obviously gets his power from fear and if nobody really fears him anymore is he actually considered very weak right now maybe um, but it was really interesting because we get all of these interviews on the streets and then we get an interview from Denji and I think it's hilarious because like I don't know first of all before I get into the hilarious moments is it just me or does Denji actually look older like I don't know if it's because Fujimoto took like a year and a half basically or roughly around that amount of time off from drawing Denji so I wonder if like it's just artistically he's changed a little bit because it has been so long since he drew Denji or did Fujimoto purposely draw Denji a little bit older he doesn't look much older it's not like a big time skip but he does look like you know maybe a year at most has gone by maybe not quite a year yet but he does I don't know to me personally he does actually look a little bit older um, but anyways it was hilarious because he's on the news totally acting like he's not Chainsaw Man and then at the end he's like oh yeah by the way I'm just guessing this because I don't know but I think Chainsaw Man's number is actually three four and then the TV crew's like okay got dude you can't be giving out your phone number and stuff and then that's when we find out that the general public does not know who Dingy is, which is something that I assumed um, in previous videos. I talked about how Dingy is basically on like a Spider-Man type of situation where he's like a, um, a, 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 I can't think of the word. Basically, he's a superhero who wears a mask. Like the chainsaw acts like a mask, basically. And so he's basically like Spider-Man and so is Asa. Because she has the scar on her face, but when she's not in her war devil mode, she doesn't have the giant scar on her face. So she's, in a sense, kind of like that Spider-Man-esque. Even even though, like, the war devil looks exactly like Asa, right? So it's kind of like, okay, that's not like a big disguise, but whatever. Um, anyways, I thought it was really cool. Um, Yoshida walks up to Denji and... Uh, He's like, yo, Denji, it's been a long time, which is really interesting that they haven't seen each other yet. And that really makes me curious, like, how far into the school year is this? Like, realistically, like, how far into the school year is this? Because the fact, like, let's say that it's been six months since Denji entered school. Like, how has Yoshida not met Denji if they go to the same school and they've been there for months? Right, because apparently this is the first time they met since back when Yoshida squared up with Quan Chi, right? So it's kind of interesting, but Yoshida kind of takes him out to dinner, and there's not too much to talk about other than you know the big moment at the end 
where basically Yoshida says that uh, he's actually part of uh, a, a group that is trying to make sure that uh, Dingy is not exposed to the world. Um, and Dingy's like, oh, it's funny you say that because my dream is to be exposed to the world. Like, he wants everybody to know that he's Chainsaw Man. So I'm really curious as to, like, where this is coming from not like his idea because obviously he wants to do it so you know all the girls will fawn over him but as far as like why it hasn't happened yet because he literally he was just on the news he could have just been like hey i'm chainsaw man you guys don't believe me watch this and then he transforms he, he can literally j just do that like why yeah, you know what I mean? Like, how do people not know that he's Chainsaw Man if he wants them to know? So I thought, I don't think that's quite what Denji means. I don't think he is trying necessarily to expose himself because he could literally do that, like, today. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not something that he has to, like, oh, I gotta accidentally be found out. It's like, no, he's... He could literally purposely go tell everybody right now that he's Chainsaw Man, transform into Chainsaw Man to prove it, and be like, yeah, I'm Chainsaw Man. I go to the school. Like, this is me. My name's Denji. Like, he could literally do that, but he's not doing that. So, um, but that's, that's kind of the end of the chapter. Um, I, I really love it because I love how Denji, like, he eats with his hands um, and stuff. And it's so funny, like, the way that Denji carries himself, the way he talks and stuff. Like, I, I genuinely just really really like Denji as a character like back in high school like he's totally somebody that I would have hung out with so Denji as a character is super relatable I love him as a character he's man it's crazy because like you don't realize how much you miss a character until you actually get like sit down time with them like this is probably not even gonna lie like this is probably the most fun I've had reading Chainsaw Man since it's been back because I feel like majority of this new arc has either been insane action which is incredible um but it, it's really awesome to see the action or we're having a lot of sit time uh sit down time with asa and that's been really good to build up our character but today's chapter um was actually more so about let's sit down with dingy and we don't have to get to know dingy because we had pretty much 97 chapters to do that so now we're um just you know seeing dingy live his regular life right um but i'm really curious as to like why dingy doesn't work for the corporation anymore like the uh devil association or whatever they're called i wonder why because like there were i believe there are five of them if i'm not mistaken there's four or five like top heads that were above makima right and just because makima's gone like why doesn't he like he still doesn't work for them though like or like, wouldn't they want to keep Denji? Or maybe those are the people that Yoshida works for. I don't know. I might have to reread um, to make sure um, if Yoshida mentioned that or not. But anyways, the point being is that's pretty much it. Um, I just love Denji as a character. And this is... It's crazy because, like, a lot of people say that, you know, like, oh, they can't wait till, you know, Chainsaw Man Part 2 goes crazy and we have insane fights, which we did last chapter was, like, 40 pages of just cinematic beauty of a battle, um, and I absolutely love that, but on top of that, it's like, this, though, this is what I love Chainsaw Man for. Like, this is little, like, reading this chapter, I had a smile on my face the entire time. I absolutely love this chapter, and if I'm being frank with you, I actually enjoyed it more than the last chapter, even though the last chapter was, like, the big shebang that everyone's been waiting for since part two started, is, let's see Denji, I want to see Chainsaw Man throw down, and we got that last chapter. Even though this chapter was more so on the, you know, slower side, or not slower side, but more downside, uh, downtime, I should say, not downside, but more downtime with Denji, I actually like this chapter more. It, and it just makes me have that nostalgic Chainsaw Man feel. And I say nostalgic, like Chainsaw Man's been around for 10 years. It just literally just came out, or it literally just went on hiatus like a year ago or whatever. So it hasn't been that long. But it does, though. It does feel like it's been a very long time. And even though we've gotten all these one shots and stuff, and we've seen Asa and whatnot. And so, like, throughout time th this past year, we have been getting work by Fujimoto. We haven't had dingy time. 
and I just miss that. I, I really do. I miss that a lot, and I, I just... I was so excited to see my boy Denji, like when he first appeared, I mean yeah he appeared last chapter but he was saving a cat as Chainsaw Man, but today's chapter like we actually got to see Denji himself, he got screen time, he even got an interview with the TV crew, and you could just see his personality, just the way he carries himself and the vibe that he puts out is one of my favorite vibes that any main character puts out, like I love Denji as a character. Like, I just love it. And that's all I have to say about the chapter. Now, let's talk about Fujimoto real quick. So, I was under the impression that because Chainsaw Man is bi-weekly now, that we were actually going to... Okay, sorry for that random cut just now. Um, I got interrupted. But anyways, as I was saying, so Fujimoto is bi-weekly now, and I was under the impression that we're going to be getting double chapters now because the last chapter was 40 pages, but he's go actually going back down to 20. And I think this is really, really good, or at least Fujimoto is like probably the luckiest mangaka of all time. <laughs> it's like this dude is literally getting an anime by MAPPA, one of the top animation companies in the game. That is... That company just announced a little bit ago that they actually want to animate all of Fujimoto's works like Fire Punch, Look Back, Goodbye Airy. I'm assuming just those three for now because like I doubt they want to do a bunch of his other one shots because Fujimoto has like a handful of other one shots. But there are more so your typical, you know, here's a, a rough draft of a first chapter type of one shots. They aren't the one shots that we are getting now like Look Back and Goodbye Airy, which are like full length stories. Those were more of like first chapter type of one shots. So I doubt that they want to animate those. I think they're mainly talking about like his big hits. Um, anyways, going back to Fujimoto, he's in a an incredible position right now because he he's Chainsaw Man is insanely popular, like insanely popular. Like this dude, like Fujimoto is like my age. Like he's only like a year above me. Like when I was 26, I remember Googling it and he was like 27. Well, I'm 27 now, so he's probably only like 28, maybe 29 at most. I don't know his birthday, but it's like for the dude to not even be 30 and to achieve this level of success is wild and without an anime. The anime hasn't even dropped yet. And, and I guarantee you, once the anime drops, it, the sales that are already skyrocketing are going to skyrocket more. And what, the reason I bring all of this up is if Fujimoto is doing 20 page chapters bi-weekly, that means that he's going to be working just, he, uh, he's going to be doing the same amount of work that he was doing in Shonen Jump, but he has twice the amount of time to do it now because now he has two weeks to only do 20 pages. And I'm assuming whenever there's a huge fight, that's when he's going to bring out the big 40 pages for that big cinematic feel that we all love Chainsaw Man for. That's incredible. And I don't know how he struck that deal. I mean, maybe because Chainsaw Man is so popular, but like, I don't see that very often. And that's very, very good for him because for anybody who knows how hard it is to be a mangaka, like, especially with heavy deadlines as going weekly, that's a super harsh work environment. And for Fujimoto to be able to have double the amount of time, then that's going to give him so much more free time. That's going to make sure that he does not suffer health problems in the future like most mangaka end up doing pretty early on. And... I don't know. I'm just super, super happy for him. Like, I literally could not be more psyched for Fujimoto. Like, he is in the best position that you could be in right now as a mangaka. And that makes me so happy. Slash jealous. Kind of makes me jealous because I'm a mangaka myself. And, like, to that is, like, a pipe, complete pipe dream to, to be in that situation. That is insane. Um, so, there is some jealousy in there. But, for the most part, I am very very happy for Fujimoto and I hope this um, allows him to carry on his career much much longer and hopefully he'll have extra time to spend with like friends and family and and uh, enjoying himself during his day because most mangaka don't 
Um, I remember the creator of Jujutsu Kaisen came out um, in an interview and they're talking about like, oh, what anime has he been watching lately? And he straight up was like, pretty much none because like I'm a mangaka. I, I don't have time to really watch anime. And I'm just like, damn, dude, like I even though like I don't work for a big publishing company and I'm not currently weekly. Actually, I'm actually on hiatus. I'm a, I'm personally on a three month hiatus. But once that hiatus is over, I'm going weekly. So um, but I do kind of know what that is like. Um, I literally had to set a schedule to where I forced myself to watch at least one episode a day just so I wouldn't be behind on a lot of anime but that's the most I could do is like one episode just like 20 minutes that's literally all the free time I had and it was like like I I had like no free time so I get exactly how that feels and the fact that like Fujimoto isn't gonna have to be suffering that type of lifestyle makes me very very happy and Honestly, kind of wish every series was bi-weekly, to be honest with you, but, you know, that's just not how the industry runs, unfortunately. But yeah, super, super happy for Fujimoto, and maybe him doing these bi-weekly chapters, and if they are only going to be 20 pages moving forward, except for huge fight scenes, um, then, who knows, maybe with some of his free time, he could be working on some more one-shots. That could be part of the deal. Or he could just be chilling, relaxing, taking care of his health because that's very, very important. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but if you want to go check out my manga series, Katosai, there will be a link in the description where you can go read it right now. Also, don't forget to check out any of my playlists. If you missed any of my weekly Chainsaw Man videos or my bi-weekly SSR videos, which are my Sunday series recommendations where every other Sunday, I read the first chapter of a manga that I've never read before, and then I recommend it to you guys. Or my manga could talk videos where every month I give you guys a life update on, well, pretty much my life and anything else anime and manga related that I didn't get a chance to talk about in other videos. But with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one.